Hi, it's Jeff here from discoverdoublebass.com. Thanks for tuning in. And of course, if you're interested in video lessons on double bass, please go and check out the website because there's plenty more over there. Now, today this lesson is a bit of a beginner's lesson really, I'm, and I'm explaining how you're able to move around the instrument and to play in tune using a technique that I call tuning anchors. Now, these are really useful uh, and can help you go from kind of floundering around, feeling for where the notes are, to having a method of being really sure about where to find them. So let me explain that to you now. Now there are four of these tuning anchors and I use that term, I've come up with it recently, uh, just because there are these spots that will help me reference um, an actual, you know, a, a pitch that's gonna be pretty much in tune. So I'm able to judge what I'm playing and to reference off the top of it. Now I'm sure you've guessed the first one, it's open strings. If you have an open string and you've tuned your bass correctly beforehand, you're able to see that other notes of the same letter name, so an A followed by an A, you can uh, reference that to make sure that you're in tune. So say for instance you're playing this A here um, and with my second finger. If I play that pitch and I want to reference that it's okay, a good tuning anchor would be an open string. I start with the octave, but it doesn't have to be the octave. I could play the fifth. And also, if I was playing the note B flat, I could actually check that this is in tune by checking or referencing the A next to it, and then carefully adding down the next finger on the uh, whilst keeping the hand shape. So that's a really good little tip, because if you're perhaps playing, say you're playing the A here, and you want to check that this G sharp is okay, well, if your hand shape's right, and let me check with a the harmonic, then there's a good chance that the G sharp will be right, and especially if you're listening carefully. So the tuning anchor doesn't have to be the note that you're playing. It could be the pitch just to one side of it. Okay, now, a lot of bass players get that one really quickly, but don't underestimate how many other variations there are. Like for instance, if you use different intervals, um, such as, I don't know, a fifth, or a minor third, a major third, the octave. So it will really help your playing to develop that as much as you can, not just playing the octaves. And to bear in mind that if your hand shape's good, you'll be able to play the finger next to the one that you know is in tune. Okay, a very similar process to the open strings is to use the harmonics. And this is where I think people fall down. Like there, I'm reaching for the D harmonic, and as I'm chatting away, it's not quite there. Now, I've found the D harmonic now, and this means that the, the note D, which is directly under my finger, should be in tune, and I can reference with the other tuning anchor, the open string. Now a lot of bass players don't seem to use the harmonic above the C, and it's a bit harder to get this one to sound. But it's really useful. Here's the one on the, on the D string, which is the note G. So I can reference that that's right. So you really want to be comfortable at playing these harmonics because if you're in this say for instance you're playing I don't know a C major scale and you want to check that the C is right before you play it there you go so if you're playing a bass line like my baby just cares for me well the first note is really going to stand out so you can just quietly reference that you're that you've got the harmonic under your fingers um, before you actually start playing. Another really quick method that's sort of along those lines I just wanted to throw in is to gently tap the string. And it's really, really quiet, but I can hear the pitch. So if I'm starting, maybe I'm starting on the note G. I think, okay, that's there. It's gonna, it's gonna sound cleanly. And it's just a good way to just double check without actually going, oh, I'm okay to start now. You know, you want to just carefully check, use a harmonic if you have to, and then. And then I can check with my other tuning anchor, the open G. And yeah, that seems pretty good. Good enough for me anyway. 
Okay, so open strings, harmonics. Make sure that you're using them. Make sure that you're using them to find notes that are just adjacent uh, to the note that you're looking for whilst keeping the hand shape right. Now, these next two are ones that I don't think that you will have thought of if you're starting out. And the first one is the neck heel. Now, this is a topic which I've discussed in great detail in uh, another lesson. And if you watch this video to the end, I'll provide a link so you can see that if you're interested in the method. But essentially, your first finger is opposite your thumb. If you're playing in a bass that has what we call a D neck stop, then your first finger will be, <laughs> sorry, I thought the bass the wrong way around there, will be roughly uh, in line with the thumb. So every time that I move my first finger there, there's a really good chance that the D is going to be in tune. A lot more so than if I just moved my hand up the neck and didn't have anything to sort of stop me. Now, a lot of beginner bass players don't realize that we're doing this, and it's really useful because the, if the D is in tune and my hand shape's correct, the E will be in tune as well. I can do it on different strings, so now the note B is in tune. Now the note D sharp is in tune because it's just above the D. Check with the uh, tuning anchor, the harmonic. So this neck heel area is really, really useful. And I'm not going to go into the full details, but you're also able, by referencing where the D is, to move further up into different positions of the neck heel and basically play this entire area, um, which is, if you're from basic guitar background, it's the 7th to the 12th fret. Um, so yeah, make sure that whatever level you're at, that you're starting to check out this, uh, this neck heel. Now, the final tuning anchor, just before we finish up. This is one that I wasn't sure whether to include because honestly, I've never seen anybody discuss this before and I'm not sure if it's kind of accepted practice uh, for double bass players. And I actually am not 100% sure if I'm using it all the time, but it's essentially using finding half position by lightly tapping the, towards the scroll where you're either with your, your thumb will start to come back at the, uh, the, you can see this part here of the neck, hopefully, um, and my thumb comes back and then I just sort of touch it and then retract slightly. So I can, there's a physical spot there and it's the same with the first finger. You can see it's touching this part of, of the neck and then my finger will come back. So if I was gonna be playing an A, and this, this had to be in tune, you know, I'm doing a TV show or something, you know, whatever, something really cool like that, and you're the first person to play, I would probably do that, that subtle movement, just to check. I would then just see if that feels okay. And yeah, I think that's good enough, you know, it sounds pretty much in tune. I think that when people are going into half position, there's a kind of... This, which is this first position of the double bass, I think people are feeling the neck, the well, it's not the neck heel, the top of the scroll. Not 100% sure about that, so I'd suggest that you experiment with it, see if it works for you. Uh, let me know in the comments if you don't agree with that. I've got to say, I'm not 100% convinced, but I know that when I come back, I'm always very confident about where half position is. And I've come to the assumption that it must be something to do with the way that the neck feels different. The dip, perhaps, at the back um, of the neck but I think most bass players will feel more comfortable in half position, uh, and the reason that they do is because they're so close uh, to the, you know, running out of pitches, and essentially there's some kind of uh, reference, some kind of tuning anchor there for you. So quickly to summarize, open strings, harmonics. Uh, we talked about using the neck heel. We talked about using the scroll, just tapping that lightly. Uh, we also talked about tapping, just to gently hear if you, you're starting on the right pitch. And last of all, I'm just gonna to say to you that if you're playing in tune, the bass will start to resonate really well. So if I'm, if I, um, I'm trying to think of a good example. If I, if I play the G, and let me just check the tuning with the harmonic, so we know that's right, and I start tapping it, or even just playing the note, you can see this G will start to ring in sympathy. I'm not touching it, but it's ringing. And it's the same with the whole bass. If you're playing in tune, it acts as a kind of natural amplification. I heard that expression online recently and I really liked it. It all starts to work better, it all starts to sound clear and kind of open up and really speak well. So just double check that you're kind of 
listen out for that. Listen out that the bass is working and that you're playing in tune. Uh, and this process will come together. And my last, last final, super final tip is make sure you're practicing scales and arpeggios because that's a key part to learning all of this. Okay, I hope you found that useful. This whistle stop tour of this tuning anchor idea um, may just have, you know, hopefully helped you to understand that the double bass isn't quite as hard as it may seem at first. So stick with it, you will absolutely make progress if you work on the right material, such as scales and arpeggios and what have you. So if you've enjoyed the lesson, you know what to do, click like, uh, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next discoverdoublebass.com video lesson.